everyone. It's great to be back at GDC. You know, back in 2020, as the pandemic was ramping up, we were the last major company to drop out of GDC. We were the first to go all remote. And then we headed into the pandemic. It was a completely crazy time with thousands of people working from around their homes. Um, but the company thrived. And so I'd like to go through some of the things that we've done uh, since, the, since the last GDC. First of all, we launched Project Liberty. Epic challenged the App Store monopolies. You know, we're in front of the Ninth Circuit Court. Uh, Europe has passed some major new legislation, and the fight goes on for the freedom of all developers. Mediatonic joined Epic, um, launched Fall Guys for free, and brought in 60 million new players. Bandcamp, the indie music site, joined Epic. Bandcamp helps indie musicians reach fans online today, and we're going to build metaverse opportunities for all musicians in the future. Fortnite thrived during this time. We launched two major chapters, lots of seasons, and brought the Fortnite audience up to 500 million player accounts. Travis Scott launched the astronomical concert into Fortnite. Ariana Grande launched the Rift Tour. And so overall, Fortnite had a really great time with tons and tons of players enjoying and the world constantly evolving. But we also learned some hard lessons. Epic entered into a massive settlement with the FTC. And it really brought home to us and to the whole industry that kids in technology are a pressing topic for all developers to take seriously, and that the expectations of regulators here in the United States and around the world are much higher than ever before. And so we've done a lot over the past few years to improve things. We've added huge sets of new parental controls into Fortnite and the Epic Games Store and new child safety features like cabin accounts. And being Epic, when we solve a problem for ourselves, we like to bring it to all other developers so they can benefit from the work. And to that end, Super Awesome joined Epic. Super Awesome makes verifiable parental consent tools. They're available to all developers for free, so it becomes much easier to comply with all of the regulatory laws around children's access to games worldwide. We also launched Unreal Engine 5 into early access during the pandemic. We went through a year. Yes. <laughs> Went through a year of early access, followed by release. Uh, we updated Fortnite to Unreal Engine 5, and then we spent a whole year visually upgrading Fortnite to the latest capabilities of Unreal Engine 5, and, which we launched uh, late last year, and we'll be showing later in this show. Epic Games Store also thrived. The player base has grown massively during this time, to over 230 million players on PC. Um, we've uh, paid out more than a billion dollars to all developers. And we've also just very recently launched self-publishing, so it's easier than ever before to launch your game to all customers in the PC market um, with really straightforward tools and earn 80%, 88% of all revenue. But that's a summary of the past, and this day of Unreal is about the future. So I'd like to invite Nick Penwarden to come up and talk about Unreal Engine 5.2. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Tim. Hi, everyone. I'm excited to get to show you some of the new experimental features we've been working on for Unreal Engine 5.2. Let's take a look. All right, so last year, we added several new features to the engine to support foliage rendering, and the Fortnite team used those features to ship Battle Royale Chapter 4. At the same time, Jacob over there and the team at Quixel we're experimenting with what's possible for photoreal foliage environments, as well as testing out the latest functionality that we've been building for Unreal Engine. So Jacob's here with us today in the Unreal Editor. Let's explore the environment. And what better way to do that than off-roading? And what better way to off-road than in a Rivian R1T? Now, Rivian uses Unreal to power their instrument cluster, including 3D visualization of their vehicles, so we worked with them to bring the R1T to life in this experience. Let's head on out, Jacob. Sure thing, on my way. All right. So we're building tools for interactive and dynamic worlds. So here we have chaos physics simulating rocks that tumble as we drive over them, leaves bend out of the way, and we also added some real-time fluid simulation. We worked with the team at Rivian to set up Unreal's chaos vehicle model to simulate the suspension of the truck and how the electric motors drive each individual wheel. Chaos also simulates how the tires compress and deform, and MetaSounds enabled the team to precisely resynthesize the sounds of the electric motors and mix them with the ambisonics of the jungle. So 
So Rivian provided us with a highly detailed model of the truck, about 71 million polygons that we're able to render in real time thanks to Nanite. Now, the Rivian not only looks incredibly realistic because of Lumen and Nanite, but also its materials. And today, we're introducing Substrate, our new material framework. <laughs> and to better demonstrate it, let's swap the paint out for Opal. Now, of course, you can't order a Rivian with Opal body panels, but Opal was the internal code name for this project and also a really great demonstration of Substrate's capabilities. The base layer models the iridescence, refraction, and reflections that occur inside of an opal. And on top of that is a layer representing the polished surface and how light is absorbed as it travels through that clear layer of varying depths. And now we can add back on the dust and dirt layers. And notice how the reflection changes when interacting with the dust layer, and that there are no artifacts along the transition from dirt to dust to opal. So Substrate is more expressive, enabling artists to create materials like this with different shading models and compose and layer those materials as they see fit. All right, let's uh, head on out, Jacob. On my way. All right. In terms of performance, Substrate materials that are similar to the current Unreal Engine shading model cost about the same. But now, artists have the freedom to author more complex materials for extremely detailed use cases, like in cinematics and in film. So we're going to drive under this fallen tree here. And everything that you've seen up to this point was painstakingly hand-built by the environment team at Quixel. Everything since that fallen tree has been built using our brand new experimental suite of procedural content generation tools, entirely an engine that are flexible, deterministic, and artist-driven. Our guiding principle in building these systems was to empower artists to make tools for artists. So Jacob's going to go ahead and add a procedural assembly to the world. And the cool thing is that it communicates. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Pretty cool. <laughs> and the cool thing is that it communicates with other nearby procedural elements in the scene, like the creek bed, so let's say a designer comes by, wants to direct the player to drive to the left. Jacob can simply move the assembly to the right, and everything updates to accommodate that change. Game design is iterative. So let's say the designer comes back, wants to give the player the choice of going left or right again. Jacob can simply move the assembly back over. Now, the artist who created this assembly also added some additional handles that Jacob can use to art direct where rock slides occur allows them to customize the piece a little bit more, make it a little easier for the Rivian to drive by. So we started by handcrafting that original part of the level to set the visuals and art direction for the entire piece, and then built out procedural tools that allowed the team to create a much larger play space much more quickly. Now let's see how we can use these procedural tools to make larger sweeping changes to the environment. So Jacob, let's start by removing some of the trees in this area. Absolutely, that's easy enough, actually. All right, a little too much. Let's, let's add some trees back in. OK. And let's also add in some cliff formations, give it a little bit more variability. So the procedural systems are all deterministic. As Jacob is experimenting with different sets of input parameters, once he finds a set that he likes, he can always go back to it and get out exactly the same results. And the procedural systems aren't just placing trees and rocks, but also fog cards, bugs, birds, everything that's needed to bring this environment to life. And everything that you've seen here works at scale. This environment is four kilometers by four kilometers. If we hide all of the procedural elements, we can see that original hand-built area about 200 meters by 200 meters. We believe that there will always be the need for hand-building environments, so we design these procedural systems to be tools for artists that work in concert with hand-built content. Both Substrate and the new procedural tools will be available in experimental form in 5.2. And everything you've seen here is running in the Unreal Editor in real time on a developer machine with an Intel 13900K CPU and NVIDIA RTX 4090 GPU. So Jacob, thanks for being here and helping us out today. Thank you very much, Nick, for having me. It's been a pleasure. All right, so come visit us at the Unreal Engine booth on the Expo floor, you can check out this demo for yourself. 
And this afternoon, here in the YBCA, we'll have a tech talk diving into the details behind this demo. In addition, the Preview 1 build of Unreal Engine 5.2 is available now. So you can test out all of the experimental new features we showed today, as well as numerous other improvements. Head over to the Epic Games Store to download the binary build and also get the full source code from the Unreal Engine repository on GitHub. Now, we found that we make the best technology for developers when we use it ourselves, when we really put the engine through its paces, both through tech demos like this one, as well as full game productions. So to talk about how the Fortnite team used the latest Unreal Engine 5 capabilities to ship Battle Royale Chapter 4, please help me welcome John Loth. Thanks, Nick. For Chapter 4, we wanted to show Fortnite in a way players had never seen before. We upgraded with broad strokes, using Lumen, Nanite, and other UE5 tech. We worked directly with the engine team to improve these features and ensure they scaled on all platforms Fortnite ships on. First up was lighting. Now, our options in the past to improve lighting have been somewhat limited because Fortnite is a really dynamic game. Big lighting just doesn't work because the moment a player destroys a wall, light maps are invalidated. So we were really excited to give Lumen a shot. It updates global illumination in real time as the environment changes. Early in Chapter 4 development, we captured a video of Lumen enabled in a Fortnite test build. And the player in the video destroyed a wall, and, and light just came flooding into the room. And honestly, it was pretty stunning. It brought new life to the environment, and the realistic bounce light worked great with Fortnite's vibrant style. While initial results were exciting, you know, nothing is that easy in game dev. And as we discovered, real-world lighting can create real-world problems. Playtests revealed areas of the map, like attics and basements, that uh, had no windows and were just too dark for gameplay. And it was also the first time we were using auto exposure, and it was causing bloomed out areas when players were in dark interiors looking outside. We solved these issues using UE5 features like local exposure and some art directable controls within Lumen that enabled us to provide a final image much better for gameplay. While the art team refined content, the engine team provided some new scalability options so that we could run Lumen on next-gen consoles at 60 frames per second. In addition to lighting, Nanite opened the door for us to add an incredible amount of detail to the Fortnite island. It was introduced in UE5 as a virtualized geometry system that supports extreme mesh complexity. So we spent some time experimenting, looking for a good balance between stylized art direction and detail so we could increase visual quality, but still maintain Fortnite's uh, iconic style. Now that artists weren't limited by triangle counts, we scaled our content pipelines to um, support Nan on high-end hardware. Tech artists modeled new vegetation assets, and the art team created some uh, high-detailed props and some amazing hero assets. But this still left us with a large building library that needed a visual upgrade. We resolved this using an offline process that took displacement maps from our materials and created high-resolution nanite meshes. It was really cool to see these classic Fortnite materials like brick, stone, and wood get a high-resolution facelift and pop off their surfaces. Now, past nanite demos have relied on static hard surface environments, but Fortnite's an animated world. Trees blow in the wind and buildings wobble when hit. So we worked with the Nanite team, and they extended the material pipeline to include masked and animated materials on Nanite geometry. The island in Fortnite is constantly evolving, with major changes each season and complete reboots when chapters launch. So it's essential that we evolve our workflows too. During Chapter 4 development, we started utilizing two new UE5 features that changed how we build levels, world partition and one file per actor. World Partition automates the level streaming, and it allowed us to work in one large level. We use level instance actors to group content logically, like a building and all of its props. One file per actor ensured our large dev team could work in this space without source control conflicts. Now, these features hadn't yet been put to their paces by a large dev team, so there were some early bumps in the road. But RLDs were in daily communication with the engine team, and we saw consistent improvements. Not long into production, 
we were developing Fortnite in a much more collaborative environment. Our goal for Chapter 4 was to deliver an awesome experience to our players. But we also hope by using and improving the engine's newest features, we've improved your experience as well. Now, with a look, with a look at the amazing work developers are already doing in UE5, please welcome Dana Cowley. Now, even when you have great tools and amazing content at your fingertips, making games is hard, and it gets even trickier when you're trying to ship while you're upgrading your features. And we put a lot of effort into making sure that, the, trans that the, um, the transition from UE4 to UE5 was as smooth as possible, and you've proven that it worked. And we've been impressed with all of the teams who have made the jump over so quickly. You know, many of you moved your games over right in the middle of development, and quite a few of you have left internal tech in favor of UE5. And as of last month, 77% of all Unreal Engine users are on UE5, and that's rapid adoption and mass. And over 750,000 of you are actively building with Unreal Engine each and every month. You've invested in us, and we're investing in you. And beyond games, you're telling amazing stories across live action and animated entertainment. And to date, more than 550 television and film projects have been made with Unreal Engine in production. Now, these are some of the leading studios using UE5 today. This represents a brain trust of talented game developers from all over the world, and it's getting bigger every day. You have validated that we're on the right path, and we're blown away by how you've embraced the tools and shown us what's possible. And now, you're about to hear from several talented teams who are bringing their awesome games to PC, console, and mobile. First up, we have Qubit Studios, a small team whose game, Infinitesimals, has not only received an Epic Mega Grant, but is also coming to the Epic Games Store with the help of Epic Games Publishing. Here to give you an exclusive new look is Michael Borjo. Hi, everyone. I was invited here today to share our story with you. Qubit Studios is a small studio from Europe. And we have one mission, to bring the world of infinitesimals to life. In our first game, you play as Captain Ockney Rodin Rake, as he and his crew explore a mysterious planet filled with lush environments. Now, a universe is already big at our scale, but when your main character is only a few millimeters tall, it takes on a whole new meaning. As a studio, we have big ideas. As a small team, we need to make choices. And that's where switching from UE4 to UE5 made a big difference for us. It has empowered us by giving us time back. Let me take you through a few examples. As Ogni is very small, we want players to truly feel its sense of scale by having a large space to explore. By using wall partition in UE5, we managed to save months of dev time. Not just because of the size of the world, but also because we can build on top of it. It allowed us to specialize a lot of systems very quickly. And with the built-in HLAD, we get strong runtime performance while being able to load the entire world visually in editor. A large world is great, but it doesn't do us any good if it's empty. And that's where the new packed actors and level instances came in handy. A level designer can use prefabs to quickly prototype ideas, while artists can refine those prefabs in editor by assembling assets together. And with one file per actor, it all happens in parallel. On the animation side, motion warping allows us to use a single animation for a large range of situations. And with Control Rig, we can quickly create those first pass animations in editor. But the most outstanding features are Nanite and Lumen. We don't need to spend time on topology optimization and can directly use high-poly meshes. Lighting is more realistic, and we don't have to use tricks for transition between exterior and interior. All in all, working with V5 has been a tremendous time saver for us, and upgrading from V4 was surprisingly easy. We were up and running in a couple of days. We can now iterate more quickly, focus on gameplay, and allocate time to riskier ideas. But enough talking. Go on the Epic Game Store and wishlist the game now. Thank you, everyone, 
enjoy the rest of the show. Your team has built a beautiful game, Michael. Fantastic work. Now, our next partner is one that needs little introduction. Kabam develops and publishes world-class, highly social, multiplayer mobile games. And today, they are here to make a special announcement. Please join me in welcoming Vice President of Product, Tyler Black. Thank you, Dana, for that kind introduction. Hi, everyone. At Kabam, we've worked with the world's biggest brands and created our own stories to bring some of the most successful mobile games to players. Today, we're proud to announce a new project, one that ushers in a whole new era for Kabam. King Arthur, Legends Rise. It's a new cross-platform squad RPG set in a stunning reimagined Arthurian world. When we began this ambitious project, we knew that Unreal Engine was the only solution that had the tools to bring incredible visuals to both mobile and PC at launch. So here's how we put those tools to use. King Arthur Legends Rise allows players to explore campaign stages and interact with their environment using a variety of animations. If we were to use traditional animation techniques, the number of assets that we would need would be massive. Thanks to Unreal's advanced animation technology, like IK rig retargeting, motion warping, and property access, we can create high-quality, detailed, and attractive animations with relatively few resources. But that isn't the only way that we're using Unreal Engine 5's tools to deepen the player experience. We're also making use of dynamic weather to affect character strengths and other stats and keep the battle gameplay fresh and immersive. But that's all from us today. We can't wait to share more with you about King Arthur Legends Rise in the coming months. So check out our website, playkingarthur.com, and sign up to stay up to date on our newest game. The next developer coming to the stage was founded a few years ago, and they're already making a big name for themselves. Hexworks is a CI game studio, and they are capturing the imaginations of fans of dark fantasy with their new action RPG, Lords of the Fallen. Creative director Cesar Vitosu is here to give you an exclusive look at how they're using UE5 to build one of this year's most highly anticipated games. Thank you, Dana. Thank you, Dana, for the introduction and handling my name so graciously. Hello, everyone. I am uh, very excited to be here and uh, represent Hexworks, our incredibly talented multinational team behind Lords of the Fallen, our upcoming dark fantasy action RPG. And today we'll be sharing how Unreal Engine 5 has helped bring our highly ambitious and decidedly grim vision to life. Please enjoy. Welcome to the Lords of the Fallen Technical Showcase. Here at Hexworks, our goal has always been to create the most immersive game experience possible. Today, we're journeying to Skyrest Bridge, one of the game's early locations, to demonstrate just some of the impressive ways Unreal Engine 5's state-of-the-art technologies have helped us deliver on this ambitious vision for our upcoming action RPG. We want players to feel fully immersed in our world by playing as their own unique virtual persona. To achieve this, we have used a combination of technologies, including 3D scans of real people and UE5's own character customization tech. Players can create unique faces and bodies by dynamically morphing between a huge range of shapes before finessing the finer details. Our extensive selection of armor sets seamlessly adapt to whatever shape the player chooses. It's really important to us that we represent as wide a proportion of our audience as possible. Being able to customize your hero in Lords of the Fallen is only the beginning. Each and every one of our characters is incredibly detailed using high resolution textures. Get up close to any surface in the game, like this tunic for example, and detail texturing provides incredible levels of micro detail. How these objects move and behave is also crucial for player immersion. UE5's Chaos Physics Engine facilitates advanced simulations 
for clothes, chains, hair, belts, and a whole lot more. This helps to substantially enhance the secondary motion in all our characters, making their movements look much more lifelike. The lighting in Lords of the Fallen takes full advantage of Unreal's brand new Lumen GI. We've been able to light our complex environments in real time, meaning we can immediately see the effect of a light bounce, for example, without waiting for the traditional slow baking processes. Watch how the lighting reacts as we move our light source around this environment. Global illumination like this can be quite demanding on processing, so we also make use of emissive shapes to add additional details to the lighting of any space. We can then fine-tune these light bounces on our nanite meshes, providing our world with impressive levels of detail and minimal impact on performance. Perhaps the most important element of Lords of the Fallen is the ability to travel between two worlds. The realm of the living, Axiom, and the realm of the dead, Umbral. We've created our own custom toolset within UE5 that allows us to intricately craft these two environments side by side and seamlessly swap between them. This means our artists and designers can ensure these worlds feel intrinsically linked like two sides of the same coin, even if one side is decidedly more horrific than the other. On behalf of Hexworks, thanks for watching today's brief tech presentation. The twin realms of Umbral and Axiom await fearless adventurers later this year when Lords of the Fallen launches on PC and current gen consoles. team is known for making some of the world's most popular MMO RPGs. And recently, they've been pushing the boundaries of cinematic storytelling, and the results speak for themselves. Here with more is NCSoft's Chief Strategy Officer, Dr. Song Yi Yoon. Thank you so much for the introduction, Dana. Good morning, everyone. I'm excited to share our latest production, Project M, with you today. As you may know, NCSoft is recognized as one of the best MMORPG developers thanks to our blockbuster franchises like Lineage and Guild Wars. However, we're not content with this achievement. We're always pushing for boundaries and exploring new technologies. So let me introduce Project M to you. It is our latest innovation, harnessing the power of cutting edge AI and graphics technology to an unprecedented level. With the help of Unreal Engine, we have achieved our vision for Project M with seamlessly integrating our foundational AI technology resulting in breathtaking detail. So to give you a sneak peek, we have prepared a video featuring our CEO and Chief Creative Officer, TJ, who will personally guide you through our newest creation as a digital version of himself. Thank you so much for your attention, and I hope you enjoy Project M. Project M is one of NCSoft's most ambitious projects to date. What would it mean to you if the world was comprised of informational particles instead of physical particles? Oh. I got a little ahead of myself. I am TJ Kemp from NCSoft. Welcome to Project M. Get him. 
How would the fabric of simulated reality change our perceived world if we could tamper with the arrangement of those particles? This very idea is what sparked Project M. The informational particles that shape Project M's world can transform reality based on your choices. And each choice you make will change your experience. The information that exists in the present reality determines how the world will unfold. Value every encounter and every moment. These will be essential in the world of Project M. This is where our journey ends for now. I look forward to seeing you all again soon. Thank you, Dr. Yin. Project M is looking amazing, and it's unlike anything we've seen. And thanks to all the teams that have given us a new look at your incredible games. Like we just saw, the worlds you're building feature awesome looking characters with loads of detail and authenticity. And our team understands that believable digital humans are at the heart of great storytelling. And for more on that, I'm happy to hand it over to our CTO, Kim LaRary. Thank you, Dana. Thank you. Some incredible games, sir. Hey, everybody. Wow, it's great to be back after four years. Um, it's good to see you all. Um, so it's been two years since we released MetaHuman Creator. This cloud-hosted uh, tool allows you to create photorealistic digital humans for your game or experience with the simplicity of an RPG character creator, yet with a level of realism and customization that you've never seen before. Our community has created millions of MetaHumans for their Unreal projects, and the work we've seen has been unbelievably breathtaking. And I'm sure a bunch of you in the audience are actually making metahumans as well. Let's take a look at some of this work. Amazing. You know, there isn't a day that, thank you. So there isn't a day that goes by that we don't see some post on LinkedIn or Facebook or wherever showing us amazing usage of metahumans. And I think it's been a really big game changer for anybody trying to tell a story in their game or their experience. Um, but today we want to take things to the next level. So I'm going to actually introduce two of my most favorite friends um, to the stage. Uh, our head of digital human technology, Vladimir Masilovich and the actress, best known as Senua, from Ninja Theory's fantastic Hellblade series, Melina Jurgens. How are you both doing? Good. Good. Thank you. Thank you. It's been a while since we were last on this stage. In fact, uh, I think it was seven years ago that uh, we went through this uh, uh, ordeal. That's a long time ago. A little ago. bit of PTSD uh, <laughs> triggering there. But it was the first time we all came together. Ninja Theory, Epic, Cubic Motion, Three Lateral, to do something that we thought would wow audiences here and sort of set a template for the future of using characters in games. So anyway, um, I think we're in a pretty uh, amazing place right now with the industry, but we do want to take things to the next level. And what I want to do a, a little bit about is how's things going at Ninja Theory? How's the, how's the new game going? Yeah, uh, the team and I are doing really good, and we're just extremely busy working on the follow-up to the first Hellblade, which will be called Senua Saga Hellblade 2. I can't wait. The first game was fantastic. Thank you. I really <laughs> can't wait to play it, so get it out soon. Anyway, I'm going to leave the stage and let these two take over. Go and blow people's minds. Thank, Thank you, Kim. Hi, everyone. 
Our guiding vision for MetaHuman has been the democratization of complex character technologies, allowing you to work faster and see the results immediately. A character is only truly believable if its motion fidelity matches its visual fidelity, but animating at this level is a hard task for even the most skilled studios. Some of our best work leveraged 4D capture, but this took specialized hardware and weeks or even months of processing time. While MetaHuman Creator gave you the ability to generate high-quality characters, animating them still wasn't as easy. This is why I'm very excited to announce a new capability to the MetaHuman product, MetaHuman Animator. MetaHuman Animator contains the essence of our 4D pipeline, but optimized to run on a single machine. It is able to use iPhone, as well as stereo professional systems, and today, we're going to demonstrate how it works. For this, we're going to need Mel, yeah. our technician John Cook, and just the phone. <laughs> <laughs> Mel, can you take your position, please? Sure. Yeah. Let me know when you're ready. OK. OK, and action. I need performance capture to work like a mirror. I need it to capture whether I'm acting scared or angry. <sighs> And sometimes, all I need is a look. Cut. Thanks, Mel. That was great. Yeah, you're welcome. OK. Our technician, John, is currently pulling Mel's performance from the phone onto his machine, where everything will be processed locally. We have updated our Live Link Face mobile app to capture all data at the best resolution possible with the device. MetaHuman Animator uses video and dev data to convert um, uh, this data into high fidelity performance animation, and it can even use audio to produce convincing tongue animation. John is currently scrubbing through the take to pick the section that he wants to process. John, are we all good with the data? Awesome. So from now on, it's just a single button click to kick off the processing, which for a performance of this length will take less than a minute to convert into animation. So Mel, while well, that is processing, let me show you something else. Yep. Oh, is that me? Yeah, this is what we refer to as your metahuman DNA. Cool. And this is generated by the capture we made earlier, right? Yeah, that's right. So from only three frames of video and dead data, we can generate a rig that predicts all of your facial expressions in just a couple of minutes. Wow. And do you only need to do this once for each actor? Yes, that's right. It calibrates the solver to your face so that we can produce the performance in, in, a, in a way that faithfully reproduces your original performance. That sounds cool. Yeah. So let's check back on the, on the processing which today is on the latest CPU and GPU hardware from AMD. MetaHuman Animator uses a custom Epic Facial Solver and Landmark Detector. We can interactively look at the animation while it's being solved and compare it to your original performance. So it looks like it just, it's almost finished. After this, it's going to do one more pass to make the curves more stable, which is really quick. And from here on, we, can, we just need to export the animation. This takes only a few seconds. And then John needs to drop it in the level and add the audio so that we can see the result. So Mel's MetaHuman should now be ready in the level. Mel, you excited to see the results? Yeah, can't wait to see it. <laughs> I need performance capture to work like a mirror. I need it to capture whether I'm acting scared or angry. And sometimes, all I need is a look. Thank you all. So, Mel, what do you think? I think it's incredible because it usually takes months between performance capture and getting any results back, so this is blowing my mind. <laughs> and all of this is solved directly onto animator friendly controls. In this case, we are using a bespoke 4D rig, which we created together with Ninja Theory for Hellblade 2, but it's also ready to use on any MetaHuman or any other rig that follows our new MetaHuman standard. Let's have a look at that. <laughs> I need performance capture to work like a mirror. I need it to capture whether I'm acting scared or angry. And sometimes, all I need is a look. So the same thing works even on stylized characters. <laughs> yeah. Thank you all. These technologies are completely redefining our creative process. As they will redefine yours, 
when we release MetaHuman Animator to everyone in just a couple of months. We've got one more thing we'd like to show you. We haven't forgotten about the needs for full performance capture shoots. What you're about to see is animation that has not been polished or edited in any way, and it took MetaHuman Animator just minutes to process start to finish. Yeah, so here's one of my favorite lines from Ninja Theory's upcoming game, Senua Saga Hellblade 2. And I really hope you enjoy it and the rest of the show. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Sign perf cut, take 13. <clears throat> now. I see through your lies. I will show them how to see as I do. I will not appease your gods. I will destroy them. Good. You like it? <laughs> Man, was that cool. All right, let's talk about the future of our creator marketplaces. We all know one of the biggest challenges in game development is the time and cost associated with making great art and visually stunning environments. Now, we've seen that by giving you access to high quality, game ready assets like Quixel Megascans, world building can be faster, more efficient, and more economical. The resulting explosion of creativity that we've seen from our Unreal Engine developer community has been awesome. In fact, it's inspired us to double down on a mission that started several years ago. Since the launch of Unreal Engine Marketplace in 2014, we've been working to aggregate and organize all the world's best digital assets for you to use in your work. In 2018, we joined forces with Quixel, whose mega scans have now been downloaded over 40 million times. In 2021, ArtStation became part of the Epic family, and we welcomed a community of the world's best digital artists who've since uploaded nearly 12 million projects to the site. Later that same year, Sketchfab joined Epic, and now has more than 10 million registered users who are using the platform to discover, share, uh, and, and manage 3D models on the web. Now, each of these businesses has their own unique superpowers. Incredible content, of course, vibrant communities, and killer capabilities. We're now working to bring all this together into a unified offering. Let's take a look. our content offerings into a new unified creator marketplace called Fab. Built on the strong foundation of sketchfab.com, we're going to drop the sketch and go all in on Fab. <laughs> Fab will be an open marketplace serving the entire digital content creation industry. That means we're going to offer assets for all game engines, all digital content creation tools, and metaverse-inspired open worlds. So whether you're a studio making a blockbuster game or a movie, or you're a player building your first island in Fortnite, our goal is to bring you everything you need to build your world in one place. We'll have 3D models, materials, sound, plugins, animations, visual effects, and more. Fab will be the new home of Quixel Megascans, MetaHumans, and other incredible epic content designed to push the limits of what's possible. We'll also bring you the high quality assets and environment packs from leading art studios, AAA game developers, media companies, and even musicians who are taking fan engagement to the next level. But our primary focus is on bringing you the best stuff out there from millions of independent artists who will benefit from the lowest fees in the industry, pocketing 88% of the 
of revenue from their sales so they can build real businesses and invest in making more great assets for you to use. That's right. Now with millions of assets, we have to make it super simple for you to find what you're looking for and get inspired along the way. We'll leverage automated tagging to consistently and accurately describe content, and we'll give you the ability to inspect 3D models before you download, making it easy to understand the game readiness of an asset so there are no surprises. Building on the success of Quixel Bridge, the Fab plugin will enable you to search, discover, drag and drop content right into your scene without leaving the game editor. We want, to, we want to improve your workflows by connecting Fab to all industry-leading digital content creation tools. For example, our partnership with Adobe will make it easy for you to export and publish models from Adobe Substance Painter directly to Fab. Finally, leveraging Sketchfab's digital asset management capabilities, Fab will be the place where you go to store, manage, and share assets either privately with teammates for collaboration or publicly on the web to showcase your work. With collaboration tools like this, we want to help small teams do big things. Now, it's no longer just major studios who are driving our industry forward. World building has become accessible to everyone. And we're seeing this today with tens of millions of new creators building awesome experiences in Fortnite, Roblox, Minecraft, and other open worlds. This is increasing the demand for ready-to-use content, and it's creating an exciting new opportunity for asset creators to reach massive new audiences. We believe an open and fair marketplace where artists and developers can come together to buy and sell assets is essential to the creation of the emerging metaverse. Now, we're going to keep you posted over the course of the next several months as this rolls out, and we're looking forward to partnering with you all to make this an industry-wide success. And now, please welcome Sax Pearson. It's great to be here today. We've been working towards this moment for a very long time. This next segment is exactly why I'm here at Epic, to move the industry forward and help make developers successful. I'm here to introduce powerful new tools to existing Fortnite creators, powerful new opportunities for professional developers. Fortnite is becoming an ecosystem. That means new tools to design, develop, and publish games, and a new economy that rewards developers. These updates bring us one step closer to Epic's vision of a connected metaverse where billions of players enjoy high-quality creations made by millions of developers. At the center of this all is Unreal Editor for Fortnite, available today in public beta on Epic Game Store. It's a new PC application that brings the power of Unreal Engine to the scale of the Fortnite audience. Deeply integrated with the game with new workflows that allow PC and all other platforms to create together fast and fluid. We call it UEFN for short. But first, let's talk about how we got here. Fortnite changed when we released Fortnite Creative four years ago. Creative is an in-game toolkit for players to make sandbox games inside Fortnite. And because of Creative, Fortnite is already much more than a game. It's already a place where players find games and developers find players. But why should you develop in Fortnite? Well, our players are highly social, content hungry, with over 500 million player accounts, massive PC presence, and the largest console player base is the best, most vibrant place for developers to find an audience quickly and publish new games. Islands built using creative tools already account for roughly 40% of playtime in Fortnite. That's billions of hours a year, and we expect that number to keep growing with UEFN. So this is a sample of games in Fortnite today. What we have noticed is that players are more engaged, they have more fun when they play Epic's own games like Battle Royale and community games made by creators like you. Like the combination is what makes Fortnite special and what is gonna help us all grow. As we've shown it on Real Engine, Epic's mission is to deliver an awesome suite of tools for developers. Unreal Editor for Fortnite is for experienced game developers like many of you in this room, but it's also for the growing community of Fortnite Island creators that are ready for Unreal Engine's proven PC editor workflow. As you're gonna see in the demo coming up, UEFN and the existing creative toolkit is already a great combo for developer and Fortnite creator teams to make incredible experiences. Of course, our long-term goal is to make the entire feature set of Unreal Engine, or bring the entire feature set of Unreal Engine to UEFN, but also over time to expose many of the other services that Epic offers. 
Bill just announced Fab. Fab is launching today also inside UEFN in an alpha version. And products like MetaHuman will be coming to UEFN in the future to support your creative vision. For the next stage of Fortnite, and ultimately the open metaverse, we also need brand new tools that solve really hard problems. Interoperability, scalability, and resilience are real issues when you operate at this scale um, and, and expect this level of durability. This is what led us to develop Verse. It's a powerful new general programming language designed specifically for this purpose. You're gonna see us use it in the demo in just a moment. The second thing we're working towards is high interoperability between UEFN and Unreal Engine that'll enable you to take your work anywhere. And by the way, behind me is the new creator portal also launching today where you can manage all your islands, one click publish them to the world, and when you publish the UEFN, your original IP and your assets are yours to take anywhere. Now let's take a closer look at UEFN features and workflows. We put together a short video and then we're gonna do a demo. Thank you. Let's start with the basics. Unreal Editor for Fortnite runs on PC and is integrated directly with Fortnite, so you have access to over four years of content, all for free, to get you started. What's special about UEFN is what we call Live Edit. Live Edit allows anyone on your team to join a UEFN session from any platform that runs Fortnite. That means someone can join from a console using the normal Fortnite client, and they're able to work alongside and collaborate with PC users. UEFN has access to all Fortnite creative devices, our modular gameplay systems that work in the in-game editor. This allows you to instantly add gameplay and quickly bootstrap your game from the hundreds of gameplay devices already available. The UEFN beta has many of the same features we use to create Fortnite, including the landscape editing toolset. You can edit the landscape to change the look of your island, or make sweeping changes to create something completely new, and then quickly play it in-game to check out the results. So even though you have access to tons of Fortnite content, with UEFN you can make content that looks nothing like Fortnite. This is a section from Forest Guardian, a tech demo built in UEFN that we are launching today. A big feature of UEFN is the ability to import your own custom assets, so we used a few 3D models, textures, and materials that we built just for the project. And all the lighting in the cave was made possible thanks to Lumen, our real-time global illumination system. You can also find more content like Quixel Megascans and Sketchfab models in our initial alpha release of the Fab plugin for UEFN. All assets are curated and optimized for use in Fortnite, and the full version of Fab will launch later this year. You can also create and modify materials, so you can change the look and feel of objects easily. And you can import skeletal meshes, and then animate using sequencer and control rig. Everything you've just seen is available today in the public beta version of Unreal Editor for Fortnite. So it's a short video of just like the most condensed way we could show some of the, like, the more important workflows I think a much better way is to tempt fate, and let's do a live demo on PC running on Fortnite public servers right here on stage. Uh, welcome Michael and Ray to the stage. Take it away. I'm glad that went well. <laughs> all right, hey folks, so let's talk about how all this was made. Michael here has the scene open in Unreal Editor so we can take a closer look. For the environment, we built this level using Quixel Megascan assets, many of which are available in the Fab UEFN plugin. We also used custom content that we built just for this demo. For the gameplay you just saw, we, ha we hand-placed enemies using a creative device called a guard spawner which generates the aliens that you saw at specific locations. However, we wanted to do more and introduce dynamic play. 
that goes beyond what the current creative devices can do. So to do this, we used our new programming language called Verse. So in this short section of code, every second, we grab the position of the player. And for each spawn location, we then calculate the distance to the player. And if it's within a certain threshold, we tell that guard to spawn into the level. So now we have gameplay that's more reactive to the player's actions. This is just a short example of using Verse, but for a deeper dive, check out the Verse Tech Talk later today. Now, Michael is going to show us how we put the intro cinematic together. Hi, everybody. So before the gameplay section, we played this quick cinematic animation. This was actually created entirely in UEFN using Sequencer. Sequencer is our multi-track editor, and it's been used in everything from in-game cinematics to Hollywood feature films. So, Let's take a look. Uh, and now all of this stuff is available right inside UEFN. So let's take a look at this last shot from a slightly different perspective. So the other thing we featured in this section was a bunch of Niagara. Niagara is now available in UEFN, and it's our uh, high-end VFX system. So, uh, and just like in the movies, you, get, you can frame up shots and have great effects. So what we're going to do here is just set this up. So just like in the movies, you have slow-mo, too. Makes everything better, right? <laughs> so these are just a sampling of some of the stuff that you can do inside Sequencer. But let's get back to the game. All right, so now that we're back in the game, in UEFN, you have access to Fortnite's time of day system. Or you could use what we did, and do what we did, and use a completely custom lighting solution. And thanks to Lumen, both daytime and nighttime look great. Now, let's go to the final gameplay section and let's close out the demo. But as a reminder, everything that you're seeing here was created in the same version of UEFN that we're releasing today. I think I'm gonna jump in here and help you, right? I'm all for that. Michael and Ray, anyone, to, everybody that put this together. The, the, the demo came about when we asked the special projects team inside Epic that came straight off the Matrix demo to why don't you put UEFN through its paces? And one amazing fact about this demo is that it's less than 400 megs, it downloads and plays in less than a minute, and it plays on any platform that Fortnite runs on. Like, that is the promise of what UEFN is. So again, Unreal Editor Fortnite is available today in public beta in Epic Game Store. If you want an early glimpse of some other technical showcases that our internal teams made uh, with UEFN and Verse, check out Deserted Domination, Forest Guardian, and The Space Inside. All three are available to play right now in Fortnite Discover. So we've talked about brand new tools and the Fortnite ecosystem. Now I want to talk about the next generation of Fortnite's economy that both Epic and creators will participate in. We call it Creator Economy 2.0. Here's how it works. The money in the economy comes from player spending in the item shop. Fortnite generates billions of dollars a year in revenue from player purchases. Fortnite players who have fun engaging in islands tend to spend more in the item shop. 
creators who make popular islands are bringing real value to the Fortnite ecosystem, and we're going to share the resulting revenue with them. This is the engine powering a creator economy 2.0. We believe this so strongly, we will distribute 40% of Fortnite's global net revenue to eligible creators who publish games in Fortnite, both independent developers and Epic. Anything we make, like Battle Royale, Zero Build, also participates in the pool shared with creators. This will be the primary way that Epic will pay for our own game development in Fortnite going forward. This is transform. <laughs> I'm glad you feel it's a big deal, and I, I feel it's a big deal, too. So, um, this, is, this is transformative and a big gut check for us, too. We imagine thousands of third-party development teams building businesses and thriving with this model. Payments from the pool are based on performance of your island. We take into account data like island popularity, engagement, retention, attracting new players. And the benefit of this new approach is rooted in player fun and rewards everyone's creative work, both yours and Epic's. There's no need to design cunning monetization loops or extractive gating items. You make an island the players love that is all you need to be part of the new economy. Creator Economy 2.0 is live right now. For eligible creators who are currently publishing, we are backdating the engagement payouts to the beginning of this month. And for more details and to sign up, go to create.fortnite.com. Everything you've seen today represents Epic's biggest bet ever, the release of advanced tools that publish directly into Fortnite on PC, console, mobile, and cloud, lowering the barrier for developers to be part of one of the biggest entertainment ecosystems. We welcome anyone to join us in the future where original content is owned by its creators, where developer earnings are a function of fun, and where ecosystem can be directly linked through community language standards like Verse. So support, to support developers who adopt UEFN, we're broadening the Epic Mega Grants program to help teams bootstrap projects that use UEFN and Verse. We're just getting started, and we hope that you'll join us and help shape the future of development. Now we're going to give you a look at what UEFN can do right inside Fortnite. After the video, Tim is going to come back out to talk about Epic's future vision. Thank you very much. Thanks. We think this is going to be a really powerful combination, putting together Fortnite's 70 million monthly active users with the power of the Unreal Editor and a new creator economy uh, to share the revenue with creators who create engaging experiences. And it's another milestone on the path to a new kind of entertainment medium, which science fiction literature calls the metaverse. Because there's a crazy amount of hype around this whole topic, I'd like to step back and take a long-term look at what we see here. And the core of it is some very real growth, starting with Fortnite's 70 million monthly active users, Roblox's 250 million monthly active users, Minecraft's 100 million, and PUBG Mobile and Apex Legends, and numerous other Metaverse-inspired games, is leading to an identifiable audience today of over 600 million active users in these virtual worlds. And it's on a growth trajectory that will put it at billions of users by the end of this decade. And so we can set aside the crazy hype cycle around NFTs and VR goggles. You know, these technologies may play a role in the future, but they are not required. This revolution is happening right now. And the core of it is something that every gamer already understands. It's you and your friends getting together online and going around as a group on voice chat, having a fun time, and social entertainment experiences. And some of these experiences are serious games like Battle Royale. Some of them are going to a concert and dancing, or chatting with friends and just having a good time. We see this as the next big changing, change in gaming and in Epic's evolution as a company. You know, we started out back in 1991 making 2D games. Uh, we recognized the opportunity with 3D, so we built the first Unreal Engine and the first Unreal Tournament game. 
We evolved to make console games like Gears of War. Then we evolved to make online games like Paragon and Fortnite. But when Fortnite shipped first in 2017, it was just our game. Uh, but over time, we recognized the, audience, the opportunity to bring it to a much wider audience. So we built Fortnite Creative Mode, um, and then the underway editor for Fortnite coming out now. But we see the future of this medium primarily not about Epic's work, but about the work of independent creators. And we're building towards this open metaverse from two different directions. First of all, we're taking the Fortnite audience we have and enhancing the development capabilities with the new tools and this creator economy to support everybody's work. But we're also helping developers building standalone products evolve towards building metaverse experiences themselves. The Unreal Engine is a tool for this. The Epic Games Store is a distribution vehicle for it. Epic Online Services has taken Fortnite's seven, and Epic's 700 million player accounts and 5 billion social connections and opened them up for free to all developers so they can plug into voice chat and participate in these social experiences in a very easy to use way. And all of these are on ramps to the future metaverse. And we really think that over this decade, Today's separate apps and ecosystems are going to join together to form tomorrow's open metaverse. And you know, because the last couple of decades have been about walled gardens, walled gardens, walled gardens, let's back up and talk about how open systems have successfully come about in the past. You know, this has happened really big time back in the early 1980s and 1990s when the open internet was built. You know, back in those days, there were a bunch of closed networks at different companies and universities that couldn't talk to each other. And so the industry got together and defined open standards to connect these closed networks into one big open network. They connected email systems by putting the at sign in email addresses so people on one service could communicate with people on other services. And then they began to define open standards like JavaScript and HTML um, for the open internet so that any user could participate. And the rule at that point was that any company could connect as an equal into the system just by following the open standards. Now let's talk about what this means for the open metaverse of the future. You know, we have the opportunity to take all of these different online ecosystems for gaming, like consoles and publishers, and connect them together into a single place where anybody can talk to anybody else. We have the opportunity to turn today's game engines into tomorrow's metaverse browser engines. And if you take a look at Unreal Engine and Unity and Godot, you, know, you have some very powerful 3D engines that have an increasingly common set of features um, and are increasingly adopting industry standards as ways of communicating with each other and with other tools. There's the GLTF content standards, there's Pixar's universal scene description format, and then there are a lot of new standards bodies that have formed to help to standardize the metaverse. There's Kronos Group, there's the Metaverse Standards Forum, there's the Academy Software Foundation and the Open 3D so Foundation. And we have the opportunity for all developers to work together to define the future of this thing. And there's also the opportunity to connect the economies of these different ecosystems. You know, what a user would really like is to be able to buy a cool looking outfit in one place and take it everywhere they go. Um, and as we were designing this new Fortnite creator economy, one of the things we were constantly thinking about is how this could in the future be connected into an open metaverse economy. And there's no reason that the core model there, in which revenue from item shops are shared with creators of experience based on engagement, couldn't be turned into an economic model for the open metaverse at large, uh, with economic peering overseen by governance groups to make uh, this work in a safe way for all players. And this gets us to a really key question here, and that is, who is going to build the metaverse in the future? And we believe the answer has to be all of us together. It has to be a combination of indie game developers together with AA and AAA game developers and Fortnite creators and Minecraft creators and Roblox creators, each bringing their best specialized knowledge to the, to the new world. And brands like Disney and Ferrari and Ralph Lauren who have already experienced the metaverse through crossovers with Fortnite, we think this is just the very beginning of a very long-term opportunity for all these companies to have a much larger presence in the digital world, um, in which it becomes a major and first-class business line for all of them. Uh, future Open Metaverse will be about musicians and music labels and film and television studios who are using virtual production today to build world-class photorealistic content, being able to bring it and launch it playably in the metaverse, timed together with their film and television experiences in an endless stream of awesome entertainment content that's open to everybody to participate in. 
Now, Epic has a long history of supporting developers this way. You know, we've built a lot of different services that are available to everybody to use. There's the Unreal Engine. There's Epic Online Services, which are open to all platforms and all stores. There's the Epic Games Store, which is open to software built on all engines using all different online services. And we believe the metaverse has to be open. It can't be another Monopoly's walled garden. And Epic is all in on this. You know, we went from the, uh, you know, we went from the pandemic to the tech downturn, the crypto implosion, and now banks are failing. And it's a really crazy time again. But we're investing very heavily in the future with the belief that companies who invest now through these hard times are going to come out the strongest company in the future, the com strongest companies in the future. Some of these investments we're making in Fortnite initially and then bringing the work to Unreal Engine. Some things we're building in Unreal Engine, taking to Fortnite. But the aim is to support everything that AAA game developers are doing today and more. And this project, to build this all out into an open system, is going to take most of the decade. And that is the journey from Unreal Engine 5 to Unreal Engine 6 that will happen over this time period. It is the same journey uh, to the open metaverse. But there's no need to wait because we're doing it live. We're building all of these systems and deploying them as we build them uh, right into Unreal Engine 5, openly with partners. Uh, so we hope you'll download this stuff, download Unreal Editor for Fortnite, download the Unreal Engine and get started, and come uh, see some of our tech talks where you talk about this in way more technical detail. So thank you very much for your time.